Yo, my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason, and I'm from the Shelf Stories YouTube channel. And I'm here in the Dice Tower today to review Alter Quest, the Ruins of Ark Inspire campaign expansion. I specify campaign because this does not contain any new heroes. Go ahead and check out some of the other expansions, including the hero expansion for that. Nor does it include many room features, which is one of the big draws of Alter Quest. This, however, does contain a lot of what you need for a whole new campaign arc. A uh, six-episode campaign, including new quests and new enemies and all that kind of stuff. So let me go ahead and bring this to the table, uh, show you what's in here, and I'll tell you what I think. So without further ado, let's go to the videotape. Welcome to Alter Quest. What I am showing you uh, first, just for reference, is the main board. This big old thing is the thing that you get in the main box. The reason I'm showing you this is because I wanted to contrast what you see here from what you're going to see in the Ruins of Ark Inspire, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So these three decks are kind of the heartbeat of any encounter in Alter Quest. So you have your enemy, Bulks the Belched Lord, burp. There, there he is right there. And we have the threat deck, which is the, you know, when you open a door, you get, you know, enemies that kind of spew out. And then here is an example of a quest deck, which is kind of what you're trying to do. You know, the threat deck gets in your way, but this really gives you the impetus for going forward. Those are going to carry over, but there's also in a main altar quest, you have the lurker cards. The lurker cards are just random enemies that get in your way that spawn out of these spaces the shadow spaces. You also have a feature deck. The feature deck uh, will generate the room features that all the quest is famous for. In this case, I have the mushrooms right there. Uh, a search deck uh, with for when you're near something and eventually you are going to hit the altar and it's going to have its own altar card. So I, uh, like I said, I'm showing you all this stuff from the main box of altar quest so that we can contrast the ruins of our conspire. Now that is a lot different now, isn't it? Look at that. My hand can almost fit over the whole thing. <laughs> so this is the main mechanical innovation that you're going to be getting with the Ruins of Ark Inspire, Encounters. These are much smaller, shorter combats that kind of fast forward everything and give you a, I don't know, like maybe 80% of what you would get uh, in a, a bigger campaign, I guess in terms of like the actual card play and the things that you need to do in order to defeat enemies, clearly you're not going to be exploring a whole bunch of everything, but you, um, the counters are all structured so that you are going to be fighting stuff out of the threat deck pretty fast. So as you move through an altar quest game, you're going to be kind of um, unfurling these a, a little bit at a time. Every time you open a door, you open one, uh, you pull over one of these cards, these profaned. Uh, so look at that. You get the little translucent mini over there for the Ruins of Ark Inspire. So then in an encounter, generally, every character is going to begin with one of these in their threat area right away. And so you are going to be assaulted by whatever the monster is. Where in Alter Quest, you'd have to like open doors and that's what, and that's what would um, you know generate threat. So then you have enemies that are there right away. And you usually have some kind of environment effect to deal with. Like in Alter Quest, there's a lot to keep track of. Um, but I think the smaller area, you're kind of banking on things being a little bit more uh, natural, a little bit more intuitive so that, you know, people can kind of figure out what's going on. So then, you know, the campfire has an effect and the tree stumps have their own effect over here. There's a tree stump, uh, you know, getting equipment and keeping the fire going in this particular uh, example so if they if the fire runs out then you lose the encounter you win the encounter not the usual way uh, this is the encounter deck the encounter deck just kind of like generates environmental stuff to get in your way here uh, in all quest is the quest deck here you are just going to try to outlast the villain deck and eventually uh, you move through these 10 cards here's the monster so uh, this is the one villain deck that comes with the expansion it's actually, um, I'd say it's a little bit of a thing that this is about as big as you get <laughs> in this expansion. You're not getting the big gnarly minis like you would get. Uh, very few features. This is, I think, one of the only features. I think there's only two that you get uh, out of the box anyway. So you don't get the big features or anything like that. You're just kind of getting a much smaller condensed experience. 
So you're going to get one threat, one villain, and one quest deck that you can play out when you have your adventure on the big board. You also get the four encounters that come with small boards. So you have the aforementioned cab ambush. You have the Arkan Hold, which is kind of a prison scenario. You have grave disturbances in a graveyard. And I cannot believe Saddlers and Scotty over at Blacklist in trouble. Really? Come on now. <laughs> so clearly that is the inn. Here is the campfire. Here is the inn where you're going to play that out. And then you have another board uh, with the different terrain. So one encounter, one terrain. Feels a little bit like Street Masters. I'll get to that in a second. Here is the story deck. You're going to be playing through that as you play through a six um, episode arc, which just like in the base game. So you have your story guide over here. Uh, what happens is they're going to integrate a couple of the encounters, not all of them. So you can play the encounter just on your own uh, as a one shot or kind of mix them up, you know, depending on what you want to do. So then the first part is going to be just, you know, setting up the encounters and stuff, chapter one, two, and three. And then the exciting part you are going to get to the story, and I'm intentionally not showing you much of it, which is that choose your own adventure that you saw an altar quest. You know, go here. If you have this, go to this. If you don't have this, go to that. Uh, we'll weave your way through six adventures, and eventually you'll finish and maybe uncover what's in the boxes. So that was Ruins of Arkanspire at the table, and I'll get right into it. Uh, this is a quality expansion. It is... Um, I, I played through all six missions. I played through a campaign and, you know, the, the different encounters and everything. And they're all solid. It's Alter Quest. <laughs> it was all developed at the same time. It was all part of the same Kickstarter. Uh, this was an add-on on the original Kickstarter for Alter Quest. And, you know, it's I really, really dig uh, what they did. The encounters are what you're here for in terms of unique content. So how did that play out? I liked them. Um they changed the pace, and I think that's probably the best thing that I'll say in terms of my enjoyment uh, of what's in here. Uh, they changed the pace. So the way that the campaign is structured, you have your big quest, which is on the big map, and then you kind of have a little side quest on the, uh, um, the, the encounter, although it's basically like an encounter, like you're facing all this, the same stuff, and you have your villain, and you know, you're just facing it in a much more constrained, rushed, everything is right at you from turn one type deal. Um, I liked it for the change of pace. That's basically it. Um, and I appreciate that. You know, sometimes like, you're, you know, setting all that up and having to run from room to room and the, the altar. I love that. That's really cool. But it's nice to have a, a, a palate cleanser, a little bit of a palate cleanser in terms of movement. Is it less complicated? Is it a more streamlined experience? Uh, I I'm I'm not really uh for, at least for me there's a, there's fewer decks but the lurker deck and the threat deck the lurkers are kind of like random monsters and the threats are like more tuned uh, a deck of monsters so like skeletons or you know the the bog creatures or something um switching out for one or the other I didn't really feel that was um you know a less complicated thing also the um you start with a threat card right away in pretty much all the encounters. And that's, you know, that's that's another thing that you have to worry about. So in answering that question, and I think the rule book actually wants to do this, like this is a good way to get a new player into uh, Alter Quest. I don't know about that because A, you have that extra threat card. So not only you don't have that turn to you know, allow a new player to ingest their player hand, and then the next round they'd be able to start fighting enemies, which is what happens in the a main Alter Quest game. Here, it throws it all in front of you, so that's the big barrier, the learning barrier in terms of learning Alter Quest is too much at once, right? And the the main game spits it out a little bit. The encounters they don't reduce a lot, and they just throw it more at you at once. So, a gateway for a new player. Probably not. Uh, Alter Quest fans who want to get their friends into this, this might not be your deliverance. <laughs> you just have to figure out the best way to teach uh, and share the information about this game. The other reason I wouldn't do the, the uh, this for a new player is Alter Quest. The the main draw is the board. The main draw is that huge, you know, but like basically it's like board of promise, board of adventure, and. 
for me, the best part of Alter Quest is the emergent storytelling combined with the combo-licious, you know, kind of card play, right? So you get both. You, you, you have your combo, your card combos, but then you have that emergent storytelling of I kick the door down and I encounter this room feature and this enemy is there. And it, it tells, um, you can tell awesome stories after the fact from a game of Alter Quest. And you can tell even better emergent stories with the stretch goal box. So for me, the stretch goal box is an essential expansion. Full stop, end of story. Get that expansion if you can. Chances are if you pick the game up at retail, the re the retailers back the stretch goal box as well. So track that thing down. If you have the just the base box, you might have be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, and if you have just the base box and the Ruins of Arkenspire, it doesn't the Ruins of Arkenspire doesn't give you enough in terms of that emergent storytelling, which is what which is more room features, uh, more uh, quest shenanigans. This game is its own campaign. And it's cool to have its own campaign. It's cool to have different options for encounters, uh, the smaller encounters. That's cool. But that's uh, what I what I really want from Alter Quest is just more room stuff, environment stuff. That's what sets this game apart, at least on a as an imaginative gamer, uh, someone who wants to tell stories at the table very very actively. So speaking of stories, this game does have one. It has a linear story, it has a campaign story, right? And I say linear, there is like branches uh, th that happens. So that's cool. The, the, the pathing and the branching and, you know, uh, if you have this, go to uh, number 76. And if you have that, go to number 54. Or if you don't have that, if you let this person die, go here. If you, <laughs> if you still have the person, go there. That's cool. It doesn't make a huge difference, but at least you get different store um, game elements. So, like, put this card in your in your journal. One character could reel this card. One character, you get a new global rule. That's a, a nice little way to kind of like go through the same adventure and experience different things. So that was well executed. In terms of the narrative, it's this is so generic. <laughs> And some people really like that. Some people really like they don't want like, you know, crazy inventive, um, you know, the elves, the, the elves do this and the dwarves do this and they want their their solid, um, you know, the fantasy. And I don't want to argue with that. That's cool. And if you that and it's there for you and it's well executed for what it is. For me, it's so generic, but I just couldn't get into it. I find myself really kind of flipping through and just like, OK, next fight, next fight, next fight. Because I didn't I wasn't able to create that resonance. But for you. You might enjoy it because you enjoy, you know, kind of a more generic, open-ended fantasy type adventure. So final thoughts time. I'm going to give this a seal of approval. It's an easy seal of approval for me because it's Alter Quest. At the end of the day, I get to, an excuse to play six more new adventures. Fantastic. And also, the encounters work in terms of changing up the mojo. Uh, if I'm playing another six, uh, you know, campaign, if I'm going to the base box, it'd be nice to kind of swap in one of these encounters. That's great. Um, and just to kind of like change it up, make things a little bit different. Is it something that newer players would, would have uh, uh, an easier gateway? I did not find that. Um, is it essential? Not nearly as essential as a stretch goal box uh, with extra room features and extra um, just it also has like another little campaign thing. There's so much going on in that box. Track that down before you track this one down. However, it's quality and I can definitely recommend Ruins of Arkenspire for another campaign in the Alter Quest world. All right, so uh, please check me out at my YouTube channel, Shelf Stories. Shelf Stories is where I have interviews with lots of different people from around the gaming universe uh, and also commentaries, my Shelf Help series, which is mental health, and also my Good Trouble series, which is culture and metagaming and different things uh, in our community. This is Jason reminding you, if you can change your mind, you can change the world. So until next time, later everybody.